Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? Well, you're probably watching this on Monday afternoon, but it is Sunday night going into Monday. It is currently 1.32 a.m. And I was just catching up on some videos before I get ready to watch the live eviction. Um, the second to the last part of Big Brother, it feels like it's been a very, very long season. Um, I already saw on Twitter that Mama Fee got evicted, which means that um, Matt Jag and Boy Jane are the stupidest players. Well, not Jag, Jag's not. Um, Boy Jane and Matt are the stupidest players on Big Brother history. Um, they literally just handed over the check to Jag. Um, is how I really feel about it. Um, what I was really hoping would happen was that, um, uh, I was really hoping that they would evict Matt, that Bowie Jane would evict Matt, and then, um, well I guess Matt and Felicia were on the thing, so I was really hoping that Jag would evict Matt, and then it would be Mama Fee, Bowie Jane, and um, Jag in the final three, and that either Mama, Mama Fee or Bowie Jane would win the next head of household, and they would evict Jag, and then it would be Mama Fee and Bowie Jane, who's done absolutely nothing this season. She won two comps, but <laughs> they weren't hard comps, let's just be for real. She won two head of households, and I was hoping that she, uh, and Bowie Jane and, and Mama Fee, uh, Felicia would go into the final two, and that Felicia would win Big Brother. I was, like, really, really hoping for it. Um, but I will say, as um, somebody a bit older, I was very proud of the fact that, and this includes Boy Jane as well, that there were several people um, that were a little bit older than the normal player that made it a while on the show. So I was impressed with that. Um, but I think now what we know <laughs> is that <clears throat> Jag has one big brother. So, <clears throat> I'm not super excited. It's funny because this does remind me of how it was back in the day. I hadn't watched it in a few years that I got really excited about watching Big Brother and then I would watch it and then like halfway through the season I'd be like, oh, so this is the direction that it's going in. It's not going to be exciting. And so then I would just kind of get tired of it, you know? And that's exactly what happened this season. <clears throat> and so I'm kind of over it. And then I'm going to watch The Garden. Have you guys heard of this show? It is so good. So last week they came out with the first two episodes. Well, it was really like an extended episode, but it was broken into two episodes. And it's called The Garden, Commune or Cult. Oh my God, it's so good, you guys. I love any of those kind of like documentary series. It is so good. But I have received so many um, messages from people. I mean, a lot of messages from people asking me to cover this video um, that Jacqueline Hill put up. It's a Jacqueline's Journey video that she put up three days ago, and it's called I Quit Drinking for 90 Days. Here's what happened. It is sitting at 318,000 views. It's probably one of her most viewed videos in a while. Um, and so I just sat down and I just watched it because people were wanting me to cover it. So I'm going to get into that in just a second. I have extensive notes taken, um, but I just want to say... Um, you know, after I made that video last night that I posted today, I feel like I cannot get centered on this camera. When I watched my video back last night, I felt like I was, like, sitting over here. <laughs> and, you know, I've gotten a couple comments about Fernalicious. So, tomorrow, Fernalicious is going to be uh, fully watered outside, and then I'm going to take her up into the bathtub where our two palm trees from the backyard that we had on the back patio um, this summer are, and she's going to join them, and fingers crossed, we are going to make her last <laughs> through the winter and bring Fernalicious back out here next spring. So, where she loves to be. I, she's still, I mean, you can tell she kind of needs some water, um, but she's actually still thriving, which is kind of crazy. Like, my neighbor came across the street today, and we were sitting out here talking and catching up. This is my neighbor I used to go to the pool with this summer, and we were catching up, and she's like, your fern is still doing so well. Like, she's not, like, dying all over and stuff like that. She's like, I don't know how you kept her alive. I'm like, I have no idea either, but I will say this. I am much better at keeping plants alive outside than I am inside, so I'm I'm very worried. I am praying for Fernalicious that she makes it through the winter. So, my husband was so nice. He brought all of the plants from the back patio up into, well, the two plants from the back patio up into the bathtub, and he was like, yeah, I think we can make them last through the winter, because he knew that it meant so much to me. Um, and then t today, we were, like, laying in bed, and he, like, walked into the bathroom, he came back out, and he goes, that bathroom smells like plants. I'm over it. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is going to be short-lived. So, 
Pray, pray for the plants and for Delicious that they make it through the winter, okay? Maybe not because they don't end up living because Alex can't stand the, the smell of plants in the bathroom. I think it's kind of nice. I was actually in there the other day and I was like, oh, like this, it just feels so like airy and natural in here and stuff like that. So anyway, um, first of all, I just want to say I love Sundays. Sundays are, I don't know if I said this on my video yesterday, but Sundays are my favorite day of the entire week. Um... When I was growing up, somebody I think misunderstood something that I said in my video yesterday when I was telling the joke about spirituality versus religiosity and things like that. Listen, I said in my video, and, and I've said this across many, many videos on my vlogs, my Peterism's channel over here and things like that. Like I have no problem with people having religious beliefs, attending church regularly. My mother did. She was a woman of very strong faith. As long as those religious beliefs don't condemn people, especially LGBTQIA plus people. Um, so I, I, I didn't mean to disrespect anybody that has religious beliefs. I think if you follow me for a long time, especially if you watch my uh, Peterism's channel, because um, I talk a lot about positive affirmations and I talk a lot about spirituality and things like that over there. And I always try to kind of like form them in a way so that um, people that are that follow religious doctrine and go to church can get something out of it and that people that are spiritual, people that are agnostic and people that are atheists can all get something out of it. Um, that's kind of why I take that stance on my channels so that anybody can hear the message. Um, just just so you know, I, I'm, I have many friends of mine that are very active in church. There's a lot of people that I know in recovery, not in recovery, that are actively involved in church. I think that's great if that's your belief system. Um, I just want to also say, I, and I've shared this in my vlog, I never had any bad experiences going to church. Um, I'm not a person, you know, I have a lot of friends of mine that had horrific experiences going to church when they were growing up. I never had that. The church that we went to was very open-minded. It was a safe place for me. Um, it was an old church. It's, it's no longer... Um, it was R.E. Deemer Lutheran uh, at 38th and Park, in downtown Indianapolis. My mom was very involved in the church. She was part of the kids club there. She taught Sunday school and she was on the um, elders board and did uh, the communion and all that kind of stuff. And um, I, I never had any bad experiences there whatsoever. The church is now closed down. It was a beautiful church. It was stained glass windows. It was everything that you imagine from an old church and I loved it. I went there from a very young age. When I was about 15 years old, I think that my parents both decided that um, it was up to me whether or not I wanted to go to church, and I kind of stopped going to church because, to be honest with you, I wasn't really getting a lot out of it. I've actually talked about this on a lot of other channels. I didn't think I was going to talk about this at all tonight. Um, so let me open my Diet Coke in my Christmas, my, my Snoopy Christmas Turbis Cup. Um, but I, I kind of stopped going for two reasons. Number one was I really didn't want to get up that early on a Sunday morning anymore being in high school. And number two, um, I never really internalized any kind of spiritual or religious belief system. Um, I kind of always just thought God was this guy with a beard and white hair that lived in the clouds. I never really internalized it. And, and I've told this story a lot. But like, in fact, when I was in high school and I would hear people be like, oh, like, you know, Jesus says this. And the, when I went to school, there were a lot of people that were very involved in youth groups and things like that. There was a huge youth group. Um, in, in my city at the time that a lot of the kids in high school went to. And so they would say things like that. And I just was like, they are such phonies. Like, they do not believe this, right? And then when I got sober and I had kind of a spiritual experience the night that I got sober, which I talked about in other videos, but I don't, I can talk about it again over here. Um, when that happened, I was kind of like, wow, this is like crazy. And then two years after I got sober was when I really went on my spiritual journey of finding my higher power. So I don't want anybody to think that like watching my channel, I'm somebody that dogs people that have religious beliefs. I don't whatsoever. The only issue I take is if those religious beliefs condemn people um, and are judgmental towards people and things like that. So that's my only issue. But if, if you belong to a church that doesn't do that, hey, more power to you. Um, and really more power to you for whatever you want to do. I just... <laughs> That's not my thing, right? Um, and so I, I said some things yesterday. I said, it's, it's a, first of all, it's a recovery saying. Because in recovery, we talk about spirituality, not religion. And I was sharing a recovery saying that says that, um, that uh, religion is for people that are, going, that are afraid of going to hell. And spirituality is for people that are already, have already been there. It's a, it's a recovery saying. Um, very much like the recovery saying that some people call it a joke. I don't know, but I love this so much. It's about this guy and he's, he's drowning. Right. And he's like, please God, please God, save me, save me. Right. And, um, this boat comes by and there's these people in this boat and they're like, get in, get in. Right. 
And he's like, no, 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 I'm praying to God. God's going to save me. God's going to save me. And the boat keeps on going. And then a helicopter comes over. And they put down a ladder. And the, and the guy in the helicopter's like, climb up the ladder, climb up the ladder. We're going to save you. And he's like, no, 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 God's going to save me, right? And then he dies. And he goes to heaven. And he meets God. And he says to God, he said, God, I like believed in you. I prayed in you. Why didn't you save me? And God said, I sent a boat. I sent a helicopter. What more did you want? And I really, I, I love that because I find... God, I find my higher power sometimes in the actions of other people, sometimes around me, and I also think that faith, faith without works is dead, and that um, I have to do a lot of the work, you know? And so I don't want anybody to believe that I'm anti this or anti that on that cha this channel. I just want to make that very, very clear because that is something that is very strong to my heart as a very, as a very spiritual person. I pray every morning. I pray every night. I'm a strong believer in prayer. You don't have to, okay? Um, for those of you that don't know, my husband is 100% an atheist. Um, there are very strong reasons that he feels that way. Um, so, uh, which I've asked if he wanted to talk about in a video. He said he's more than willing to talk about that in a video. So we can talk about that in a video sometime. Whenever we do Q and A's, we kind of forget about it. Um, but a lot of people have asked him to share that story. So, but you know, he is somebody that is very, very encouraging of my spiritual beliefs. If he sees me going through something rough, he'll be like, do you need to pray on it? You know, things like that. Or he'll say, did you do your prayers tonight? Whatever. I have already done my prayers tonight into my 10 step inventory, my gratitude list and all that kind of stuff. Um, probably a good idea before I get into this video, but this isn't going to be like a really like drama filled video or anything like that. Um, but then, you know, like I'll ask him questions about his atheism, which atheism is very much a belief system as well. Um, so I just want to make that very, very clear. But I woke up today after having made this video last night and I really, when I, so I watched the video back last night and then I scheduled to post it and I scheduled it for 2.30 today and we were getting ready to go to brunch and I kind of had forgotten that I had to schedule it to post. Like, I thought that I still had to come home and post it. And I was feeling kind of like, I don't know if I should post it. I don't know if I should feel how to post it. Um, last night before I went to bed, I was like, I don't know if I, you know, whatever. And I kind of forgotten that I posted it or that I was scheduled it to post it. And um, I woke up today and I just, I felt this lightness off of me. I, honest to God, I felt this lightness. And, you know, um... There are so you. There were so many people, you guys, in the comment sections, and people that DM'd me and emailed me and shared personal stories of their struggles of standing up for themselves. People encouraging me to continue to cuss forty times in a video. People saying that they really appreciated me listening to them, um, and that you know, some people said the the cussing and, and I don't feel like you were yelling was never off putting to me. Other people were like, hey, I was one of those people that felt like it was off putting. Thank you for listening to me. Um, there were other people that were like. Yeah, I had to unsubscribe to you for a while, and I hope that I can come back, and I'm going to, you know, wait for a while and kind of see how things go, and, and I respect all of that, you know, I just want to say, um, that video last night really, to be honest with you, um, was for me more than anybody else, um, and I feel like I'm, I'm, I mean, Jacqueline has her journey and Peter has his, right? We all have our journey, you know? Um, I love, like, years ago, I saw this Pathfinder ad. I, I've talked about this a lot. But years ago, I saw this Pathfinder ad. Remember when they used to say, I mean, this is like 20 years ago. They used to say, um, and incidentally, I used to drive a Pathfinder, which is kind of funny. But they used to say, um, the journey is a desk, uh, um, you know, they used to say, um, what was the saying? Anyway, the Pathfinder ad was, the journey is the destination. And I love that, right? Uh, no, people would say, it's not the journey, it's the destination. Or it's not the destination, it's the journey or whatever. And then Pathfinder came out with this commercial and I saw it on TV and I was like, oh, that is so good. Like, I'm stealing that. And it was, the journey is the destination. Meaning that whatever we're, what journey we're on in life, um, is, is where we're supposed to be going. And if you watch a lot of my other channels, you know that I very, very much believe that life is like a school and we are taught lessons in life. I very much also believe, like in the book, like if life were a game, these are the rules by Dr. Sheree Scott, one of the most powerful books I've ever read in my life. Um, she says in the book that in life, there will be lessons and lessons are repeated until they are learned. And I believe that um, they may be repeated in different ways. I think Jacqueline kind of hints on that a little bit tonight in her, or t when she posted her video that I watched tonight. Um, but I'm, I very much believe that. Um, I, I also want to say this one thing. 
Um, I probably am going forward, a lot of my personal life and stuff is going to be woven into my videos. Um, not the entirety of it. Not every video is going to be an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. This one is already at almost 15 minutes and I haven't even really gotten the meat and potatoes of it, but that's okay. Uh, I know that some people are like, oh my god, your videos are so long. Listen, I am really open to hearing what people want from my videos, but I also can't appease everybody. And at the end of the day, I have to do what makes me happy. And if I have to film an hour long video, I will. But one of the things I love to do is to tell stories in my life. Um, especially when they kind of apply to things that I'm talking about in a video. Um, that's not going to stop. I've never been somebody that's gotten like right into the drama and that's not going to stop. It still to this day, seven years later, kind of like cracks me up when people are like, oh my God, would you just get to the drama? I'm like, okay, I've literally been on YouTube for seven years. I don't know if it's people that are like new to my channel or whatever, but it's like, I am not the person that gets like right into the drama. I think we know that, right? And I don't consider this video drama that Jacqueline did. So, you know, I woke up today and I just felt this lightness over me. I was like oh my god like I feel like I didn't realize at the time what saying what I needed to say on video last night did for me and then the video posts and we leave brunch and I'm like you know we're going to get Diet Cokes at the gas station and you know like Alex is driving home and stuff like that and I just like happened to get on my phone and I'm like looking at it and I'm like oh my god that video post that I forgot and then there were like so many supportive comments I just was like this is so nice. Like, I'm so glad that there were so many people, not everybody, but, you know, it's whatever, that there were so many people that really were open to hearing what I had to say, even people that I had offended and things like that. Um, you know, I think, I think maybe one of the misconceptions for my channel is that I hold a lot of people accountable and I call them out, which I do, and I plan on continuing to do that, right? Um... I have also give credit where credit's due, and that's tonight about this Jaclyn Hill video. I just want to say that um, I've held Jaclyn, Jaclyn Hill accountable for many, many things, and will continue to in the future. This video tonight, talking about her journey of quitting drinking, is not one of those videos. I just want to make that very, very clear. But I will continue to hold her accountable in the future. That's not going to stop just because she made a video that I'm happy for her, for her choices and things like that. I'm proud of her for her choices. Not that she's looking at me for that, but I just want to say that. Um... But I think that one of the things that people misunderstand is that if any of these people that I called out, you know, like, if, and I'm not asking for it, I'm not demanding it, I'm just saying, right? Like, if any of these people that I talk about got in a video and attempted to do the right thing or attempted to take accountability for it or whatever, I'm not one of those people that's going to be like, yeah, it wasn't enough. Um, I mean, I have done that in the past. But if they attempted to, and I really saw authentic change from them, no, I wouldn't instantly follow them back. People say I said that. I, I never said that about anybody. I wouldn't immediately follow them back. Like many of you out there, I probably would watch for a while, you know. Um, and, I mean, some of these people have been doing some of these things for years and years and years. So it would be a sincere change that I would have to see over a period of time. Um, as far as the video last night, that was just me trying to show you, um, it was really a video trying to show you how recovery works for me to kind of make sense of stuff in my life and how I work through it <clears throat> and what happens in the long run. So I just want to say thank you so much, um, for being really supportive on that video. Um, and I also want to, there was a couple things, I took some notes about some things I wanted to say. Um, hold on a second. Uh, I also want to say that, because there was a lot of people that are like, but I like the Peter that cusses. I'm going to continue to cuss, okay? I just want to say that. I'm 51 years old. I didn't, I think, okay, so I didn't cuss for a long time on this channel. And the reason why is, and you can go back and fact check this. I actually talked about this on videos, and I would say 25 cents for the cuss jar, and I say chai chut. I'll go back to saying some of those things. Um, a lot of people, I think, are worried that I'm going to be like this watered-down version of myself. You're still going to get the real Peter, okay? You're still going to get the passionate, heated Peter about things. Um... I just don't want to take it to an area where I feel or you feel like I'm yelling, right? I don't want every other word out of my mouth to be a cuss word. That being said, I'm going to cuss. Like, if I'm sitting there talking to my friend, I don't cuss every other sentence, right? But if it comes out, it comes out. So there will still be some cuss words. Um, every once in a while, I'll probably tell an influencer to get effed. Um, and I'll probably still be calling them boring turds. So just so you know, um, that will not... like. And this is not me retracting what I said last night, because I know there's those people that are going to be like, well, Peter, you're retracting everything you said. No. I said, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to land, land on the other side, and this is me figuring it out. Um, I still want to be exactly who I am in my heart and soul, right? And I'm not going to change that. Um, but at the same time, 
I don't want to, like I said last night, be yelling and all that kind of stuff. But the other thing is this. One of the reasons why I didn't cuss on YouTube for so long, and I'm not talking about over and over and over cussing, I'm talking about a cuss word here and there, was because YouTube didn't like it, okay? Now, YouTube has really lightened up on that a lot, just so you know, um, and a lot of people are cussing their videos because YouTube's lightened up on it, and YouTube doesn't care as much anymore. Um, so, that was one of the reasons why I didn't cuss on my channel for a long time. Um, yeah, and I just said on here, I will still be calling influencers boring turds, and yes, from time to time, I will probably tell them to get effed. <laughs> Uh, I will not be a watered down version. I will still be passionate. I just want it. Oh, this is what I said. I just don't want it to come from a point of anger. I think sometimes some of it was, I think what was being seen on video was like just like I, I felt, oh, I don't know. I just, I, I think sometimes, first of all, I think sometimes passion and anger is misinterpreted. And so when I feel like if you watch my reality TV channel, I, I get just as heated over there, right? I think people could say easily that I'm yelling over there. But I think because I'm laughing and stuff, people are like, oh, no, this isn't yelling. This is Peter just getting really heated about it. Um, for me, when I'm talking about integrity, morals, and character, um, I think... I do get heated about that. That's something that is important to me in my life, something that I've worked on for a very long time. It's something that me and all my friends talk about. I get very heated about it, talking about it on the way to a meeting with my friend Tanya Jean, you know, that I get very, very heated about those things. But I wanted to make that clear. Um, <clears throat> from now on, I plan to be myself, whoever that is, for that day. And we'll talk about whoever I want to talk about, however passionately I feel. Um, and I will continue to take constructive criticism and change accordingly to take accountability. Um, and that's really all I wanted to say about the video from last night. Okay, so let's get into the Jaclyn Hill video. Um, but before I do, I just want to say one last time. <coughs> Am I at the 40 minute mark? Because that's usually when I start coughing. Oh my God, you guys, today, my husband looked over at me at brunch. I said this in my vlog. My vlog was an hour and a half today. I looked over at my husband, and he, or he looked over at me, and he goes, there's something in your nose. It looks like you had a nosebleed, and it stopped. Well, there was no blood on my pillowcase or anything this morning when I woke up, and I was like, really? He was like, yeah, you should probably go in the bathroom and like clean that up. So I went in the bathroom, and I was like, oh my God, there is there's like dried blood in there. And so a lot of people in my vlog are saying that like their husbands have it, they have it, and it's from like allergies and stuff like that. I don't even know the last time that I had a, a nosebleed, right? And so I'm like in there trying to clean it out and then it started bleeding again. Finally, I like blew my nose and I think that's what stopped it, but that was kind of scary. So yeah, again, I just want to say thank you so much for the support on that video. Um, I was scared to post that video and it really meant a lot to me. Okay, so let's talk about this video that Jacqueline Hill did that sh where she's announcing that she quit drinking for 90 days. And I'm just going to read straight from my notes and kind of like once I read it, I'll kind of like go into a little bit more. So, like I said before, I have a lot of issues with Jacqueline Hill. I think people know that. Um, I think people probably are expecting me to drag her in this video, okay, or say she's lying about this. I'm not doing that. Um, and in fact, well, that's the next part of my thing. Um... I still have a lot of issues with Jacqueline, and the one thing I will say is this, is that this video was so authentic and real, and I'm not just saying that as a person in recovery to another person that quit drinking, okay? This video was very authentic, and I'm taking notes, and I'm like, yep, that's how I felt. Yep, I went through that. She's 100% telling the truth, okay? I'm just going to tell you that right now. I wish, and maybe she's not there yet, I don't know, and that's not a good enough excuse for me. But I wish, because she even talks about accountability in this video, I wish that she could do this in addressing some of the issues that people have with her over alleged lies that people have, she's told and closing of businesses and the cozy brand. I wish she could be this authentic talking about those things. And in all honesty, I really think that a lot of people would be like, wow, like I, if she's going to do it, I'm going to tell you, like, I think this is the time for her to do it. I've said to, about other people, like, if they're going to come out and do take an accountability video, like this, not the James Charles one, but, like, for about other things, like, when people are looking at you and they're like, wow, like, I'm really impressed with what you're doing, that's the time to do it, right? Because you're already in people's favor and they're going to really listen to what you have to say. I can really tell that Jaclyn Hill is, well, physically, and it seems mentally changing positively, 
I hope that this allows her, since she's talking about taking accountability, to look in a mirror at some of these things and some of the people that she's hurt. Um, I mean, she talked about removing a lot of toxicity from her life, and I'm like, mm, girl, you still follow some toxic people. I don't know about that. So anyway, but I, I like, I wish her the best, you know? I, I, the only thing, and I was going to say this for the very end of the video, but I'm not going to do a mic drop video, because I want, I want my coverage of this to be very supportive of her, because I thought it was 100% a very, very real video. Um, and I thought... I've said this a lot, and, and like she says, she never once references going to a 12-step program. And um, I think for those of you that know, I am in a 12-step program. I will be referencing part of my story in reference to what she shares in this video. You do not have to work a 12-step program to get sober. Okay, I just want to make that very, very clear. That's what I do. That's my experience, strength, and hope. That's not for everybody. There's many, many ways for people to get sober. So I just want to say that. Um, but, I, you know, when I'm sitting there listening to it, I'm like, okay, this is, like, the real deal. Like, she's being really gen genuine and authentic. Um, I think one thing, I have this in my notes, but I want to say this now. When I was watching a video, mm, before that I wanted to say, I've said this a lot, that I don't know that I could have gotten on video in my first 90 days sober or whatever, early sobriety year and shared my story and where I was at. First of all, I don't even know... I was so, like, hand to cup, hand to mouth, like, the first six months of my life. Like, I just, it was still really a struggle for me. I mean, there were, it was minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day for me. Um, that I don't know that I could publicly share. I see a lot of people in early sobriety on TikTok and other places sharing their stories of getting sober. And I'm like, I don't really know that I could do that. I don't know that I knew who I was well enough. I don't know that I could have articulated that enough. You know, I just didn't say a whole lot. I would go to meetings and I would try to say the right thing, right? And then I can remember my sponsor would saying to me, you just need to shut your mouth, okay? Shut your mouth and open your ears because you don't have anything to say. You just need to listen to what people are saying, right? Um, but I do want to say this as far as the Jacqueline's journey thing, right? There is a huge difference between chemical dependency and substance abuse. This is one thing that we don't talk about in our society a lot, right? Um, and these are pretty much like treatment words, medical words, right? There's a huge difference between that. Um, when we talk about somebody that's like an alcoholic or addict, we're talking about chemical dependency. There are also people that abuse substances, whether it's alcohol, pills, whatever, for periods of their life to medicate themselves and get them through hard periods of time or because they're partying like in their younger years and things like that. But then they don't have a problem like putting it down and stopping. Um, from hearing Jacqueline's story, I kind of feel like that is what she's saying in her video, if that makes sense. I think, I think it would have been really powerful and I understand why she didn't continue to do it. If when she went back to drinking, she would have continued her Jacqueline's Journey video series and shared what was going on in her mind at this point. I think that one thing I would say to Jacqueline as a person in recovery that we don't judge people out there, and like she even says that in her video, don't judge anybody that's trying to quit drinking. If she decides to go back and have a drink here or there, like she shouldn't be like, people be like, she decided she's drinking again and she came out and did this video. Listen, I don't hear anywhere in this where she's talking about alcoholism. I hear in her here talking about, and that's not my mind to put on somebody. That's her to decide whether that is something that fits her or not, right? But I hear her talking about abusing a substance for a period of time to help medicate herself. She even says that to get her through this tough time, right? There's a lot of people that I know that do that, and they are not addicts or alcoholics. And then down the road, they can pick up and they can have a glass of wine here or a drink here. And that might be her story. I don't want her to feel like if she decides to have a drink here or there, she can't come back to video and be honest about it because people will scrutinize her. And I, and I don't think that's fair if she decides to do that. I just want to say that, right? Um, so I want to get into these. I'm going to get in these notes. So. Um, like I said, I have a lot of issues with Jacqueline, but this video is not about that, even though I did say I wish, I do, I wish she could take this authenticity and being this genuine and just address her audience about all this stuff, because I think people would kind of live for it right now, in all honesty. This is me not dragging her for the lies. This is me saying, like, Jacqueline, this is your moment, okay? Like, this was such a great video. Like, people would really receive it well if you sat down and said, listen, I need to talk about the Cozy brand. I need to talk about the closing of my brands. I need to talk to you about the future of Jaclyn Cosmetics. I think if she could do that and just be completely as honest as she possibly can on video, I think it would be really, really well received. Um, and I think people would really hear it. And that, that's not a criticism. I'm just giving her a genuine suggestion based on what I watched in this video. Because this video, to me, there were so many things. And I know, like, I 
was reading some of the comments and people were kind of like, there were there were very supportive comments, but I would say there was a few comments on there where people were kind of like, yeah, and, and blah, 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 and being like kind of nasty about it. And I'm like, listen, as somebody in recovery that quit drinking, like I relate 100% to this video and the things that she said in it. So let's get into that. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to say congratulations to Jacqueline for quitting drinking for a day, for 30 days, for 90 days. She's not drank for 90 days now. I think that's amazing. I think, um, when I think back on my early sobriety, like 90 days seemed inconceivable to me on day one, two to five, six, ten, right? If somebody had said to me, and she references several times that she set this goal for 30 days. It kind of reminded me of when I became a vegetarian a little bit. She set this goal for 30 days, and then that was it. But then when she had the 30-day mark, she wanted to continue. And I was like, oh my god, I so relate to that, right? Um, I never had any long-term plan of staying sober. This is going to stop in about 10 seconds. Let me stop it. Hold on a second. I had to do the little pose. I never had any plan. And like I said, I'm going to share weave my story through here as well. Um... Because I think a lot of people ask me to talk about this because they know that I'm sober. So, what the hell? <laughs> I'm going to share my story as well, right? But I so relate to that, you know, of being like... And, and, like, of course, our stories are completely different. Like, I had so much to lose at the point because, like, everybody was done with me drinking and using drugs. And, um... And so I just was like, I mean, nobody really wanted me around. I mean, nobody was going to help me anymore. I was screwed, right? So it's not necessarily the same situation. But I think the sentiment and the feelings were similar, so, I don't know that, like, when she's talking about this 30 days and stuff like that, like, I can remember being, like, within my first 10 days sober, and I was like, this is, this is, I, there's no way. Like, people would literally sit up in meetings and say they had, like, 10 years. I'm like, there's no way that they have 10 years sober. They're liars. They're drinking on the weekends. <laughs> like, I just couldn't, I, there was no way that I thought that I could stay sober that long. So, I get what she's saying. So much of what she said in this video so rang true to my experience, and I'm just telling you right now, if you ever go to a meeting, a 12-step meeting where they're talking about addiction, you, you literally will hear the things that she's talking about, okay? Like, this is the real deal. I almost kind of at one point, I was like, is she, like, going to meetings and not saying that she's going to meetings? Like, but she's working with a therapist, which I think is great. I do want to say this one thing, and I have this in my notes. Um, and she says in there, she references going to a doctor and things like that, and her doctor checking out her medical uh, issues. And she's got had, like, a lot of medical improvements from quitting drinking, which is fantastic. I think it's amazing, right? The one thing I do want to say is, if you're drinking even several days a week, okay? Even if it doesn't seem like a lot to you, but you're drinking, like, let's say, binge drinking on the weekend or having a couple glasses of wine every single night or you're drinking a couple nights a week and you decide to quit drinking, please consult a physician. It can be extremely dangerous. Everybody's physical composition is different and people do die and suffer major medical issues as a result of just cold turkey stopping drinking or any other substances. So please, 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 if you decide to do this, consult a doctor. She says in the video that she has seen a doctor and that she also says that she has a therapist that she's seen. And her therapist actually gives her some great advice, which was... I mean, when I heard it, I was like, oh my god, that takes me so back. And you guys will know if you've watched my videos for a while, because I've, I've referenced what she talks about in there. And it's really meaningful to me. I mean, there were so many things that she said that I was just was kind of like, I really like this, Jacqueline. Like, this is... And this is not me being like, oh, water down and kiss assy. I mean, this just happens to be the first video back that I'm making tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll shred a fool, okay? But no, like this is, like there were so many parts of this video that I was like, God, I just wish she could be like this all the time because this is so authentic. I think this is the Jacqueline that people fell in love with, you know? So anyway, I just wanted to say that about the, the uh, scene of physician because I've had so many people in my life that I've known that have tried to quit on their own and not seeking any kind of medical help or anything like that and they end up it just like well first of all it's harder for them to quit um the accountability factor is taken away because they're not talking to anybody professional about it and it's just they some I, i've had friends of mine die that have tried especially friends of mine that have tried to cold turkey off of heroin and um yeah it can just be really really scary and i know that sometimes it's scary to go to our doctors and tell our doctors or therapists or whoever, or even friends of ours, that we have a problem and that we need to stop or slow down. Um, you know, back in the old days of recovery, like, we do we detoxed our own people. Like, this isn't something that we would do today. But they would literally, like, take people, and if you're drinking, like, a fifth and a half of whiskey a day, they would bring you into your home, and then they would give you, like, the next day, like, a fifth of whiskey, and then the next day, like, three-fourths of whiskey, and then the next day, like, a half of whiskey, and they would whittle it down. It was detoxing people, you know, weaning them off of alcohol. We used to do that back in the day. We used to do it with drugs, too. We don't do that anymore because of liability issues and things like that. 
it's ex extremely dangerous to just like wean yourself off of something and I've seen catastrophic consequences as a result of that of people dying and and things like that and people making it even 10 times harder for them to quit so please if you're going to i know there's such shame and guilt associated with going to your your primary care physician or whoever and just saying like i want to quit and i have to be honest with you like i've been no doctor is going to arrest you write you up call you into the police or anything like that for admitting that you're using heroin cocaine uh molly methamphetamine they're not going to do that right no, that, no doctor is going to do that they have the hipaa law and things like like that most doctors will say thank you so much for being honest with me let's figure this out they will also be able to tell you if you need to have like an inpatient detox and things like that or they'll tell you if you don't you know um and it's just always good to have that kind of like medical um uh, assistance as you're going through this so I, I was really glad that she actually said that in the video talks about going to a doctor talked about going to her therapist and and saying that she was quitting drinking that she had quit drinking for three or five days at that point or something like that I was like okay so this is her being honest with professional people and I think that that's a great role model for the rest of the people out there that are trying to quit you know um I put on here that she physically looks really really good I think this is probably um <laughs> well I, here's the thing okay <laughs> Girl, congrats on the bracelet, the, bra the bracelets. Congrats on the braces, right? Like, I think everybody, my husband wants to get braces so bad. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Takes me back to when I was like in sixth grade and I had braces, right? But like, it is kind of funny just to like watch her with braces. But she like, she leads with that. And I kind of like, I was like, it's kind of funny. But um, I physically think she looks the best that she's looked in years. I really, really do. She talks a lot about the bloating. Okay, I've shared this story before. My mom used to, we would take a picture every year my mom and the dog and I that I had when I was growing up and we would take a picture of the three of us standing there. After we both got sober, it was always in front of the fireplace. After we got sober, I don't know why this is funny to me, but it's just like so, okay. My mom and I took a picture of the two of us after I got sober together, right? Or after she, she got, my mom got sober six months after I did. And so to have this family disease together and this family recovery was amazing. And it's the greatest gift my mom ever gave me. Hands down, the greatest gift my mother ever gave me was her sobriety. Period. In the story, we were able to have almost 13 years of sober living together and sober language together. And it just was unbelievable. And for the first time in my life, I was able to be, my, you guys, I have this heated vest on, okay? <laughs> this little light of mine, and it's like itching my stomach. Um, but for the first time in my life, I was able to be the child in the relationship, and my mother was able to be the mother, and it was amazing. Um, I can't tell you how many friends of mine, when I share this story of my mother in recovery, will say to me, their parents died drinking and using drugs, and um, their parents never got to see them get sober, and they wish that they had shared that with their parents, you know, whether their parents were substance abusers or alcoholics, addicts, chemical dependent or not, they'd say, like, it just makes me really sad that my parents never got to meet, see me get sober, and they never did, and there was so much anger and resentment there, and, you know, so I'm so, like, so grateful for my mom and her sobriety. But anyway, my mom and I took this picture the Christmas, we would have been in sober a year, and, like, she talks about losing weight here, so I'm gonna talk about that in a second, but we took this picture of us in front of the fireplace. So my mom would line these pictures up, right? Well, <laughs> she put the picture of us, like the last one, like, I think it was like the second picture, and then she put him in a row, and like, people thought that that was like the older picture because we looked better sober physically than we did when we were drinking two years before then. We looked bloated. I mean, my mother, she lost, like I mean, literally like 40 pounds in a couple months. She looked so fantastic. Her face, like all the bloatedness of her face went away. Um, she had so much energy. She felt fantastic. And I did too. And that picture looked like it was from like five to 10 years before. Well, not 10 years before, because I would have been 12, but it looked like it was from like four or five years from before, you know? And my mom looked younger, I looked younger, we looked so much better, you know, sober. Um, and I always remember that. Like, people would think that picture, that was the newest one was from, like, before, you know? That's how bad we looked when we were drinking. You don't think you do sometimes, but you do. So she looks physically fantastic. Um, I said in here that she's telling the 100% truth, and I can tell by the things that she's saying. This is real based on what I've experienced. Um, and then I said, um, okay, I've shared some of these things. So, um... The first thing that I want to address is that she talks about being afraid to go. She didn't want to necessarily quit drinking because she was kind of afraid of going into social settings. So she talks about how, like, she quit drinking because 
she started drinking because of lipstick gate and things like that and then to kind of medicate herself and deal with what was going on and then she stopped that but then she started drinking socially but then the social drinking she wasn't happy with that and so she wanted to stop that but then she'd start it and stop it start it and stop it until she finally decided that she just was done um so uh Okay, so she says all that, right? And she talks about being afraid to go into social settings. I literally did not know who I was without a drink in my hand or smoking a joint or eating a pill or cocaine or whatever. I did not know who I was. And I've shared this a lot in my videos before, but it's like, we don't know who we are sexually. We don't know who we are. This is a lot of stuff that people don't want to talk about. We don't know how to be intimate with somebody. We don't know how to be romantic with somebody. We don't know how to be honest with somebody. We, like, she starts crying in this video, and I'm like, oh my God, she's crying out of joy. Like, I so relate to that. Like, my emotions were so screwed up. Like, I did not know if I was coming or going. Like, honest to God, right? And that's when you really realize, like, how dependent on you you are. It's like the drink, t you take the drink, and then the drink takes you. Um... And then you're completely like, it's, you know, it's, you're in the drink, right? You know, we talk about alcoholism being a, um, physical craving combined with a mental obsession. Um, that is what I had. I had a physical craving. My body wanted it with a mental obsession, which meant if I started thinking about it until I had it, I wasn't okay. It was so hard for me to get through hours and you know like I'm gonna reference something about her like I, I, talking about the holidays and stuff here in a second but for me it wasn't even we t say one day at a time it wasn't even one day at a time it was one minute at a time I mean there were and I've shared this a lot there were many days where I would sit on my kitchen counter I had my drug dealers um, numbers on pieces of paper here and then I would have my like all these people I met in recovery here and I would look at the, the kitchen um, clock and it would be like 535 and it'd be like if I can just make it to six I can walk down the liquor store I can call one of these people and I can get some drugs I can do this whatever right and then I would just call people call people call people call people until somebody would say I'm coming over to sit with you or I'm coming to pick you up or just talk to me on the phone until you know and then that's how I made it sometimes it literally was sometimes minute by minute because I was so obsessed on I want a drink I want a drink you know the idea of going into social settings was so scary to me. I didn't know how to dance. I didn't know how to stand there. I didn't know what to do with my hands. I didn't know who I was without a drink in my hand. I honest to God didn't, you know? Um, and so for me, a lot of it at first was I was told not to go around barbershops because you'll sooner or later you'll get your hair, you'll get your hair cut. It was what I was told, you know? Um, I don't think she was as nearly as far gone as I was. So for her to be able to go around social settings and just tell people, keep on drinking if you want to. There were a lot of social settings where I had to be with people that did not drink. Um, or I also had to realize that I could leave whenever I wanted to. That doesn't necessarily seem like her story. Um, I will say that my mom, she felt like she got sober and immediately the desire to drink was lifted from her, even though my mom was a very heavy drinker. And so, um, and my mom didn't like use drugs the way that I did. Um, so she could easily be around people that were drinking. I did not have that easy of a situation when I got sober. My mom's attitude was very much like Jacqueline's was like, drink around me if you want. I had a hard time being around people that were drinking because it was just like, I would see it and I would want it and I would obsess over it. So, um, but, so anyway, yeah, she's 100% telling the truth. Also, um, yeah, I already said all this kind of stuff. Okay, so, where was that at? She's talking about the social settings. I so related to that. Um, she talks about how before she was doing it kind of like for, for, uh, health and fitness and weight, and now she's doing it for mental clarity. Um, and this is the evolving of wanting to make changes, you know, in your life when it comes to addiction issues. Um, okay, so I already said the thing about if she decides to go back to drinking, I think she's just to be honest about it. I, you know, even if she comes out and she says, hey, I think I'm an alcoholic, or no, I don't think this is a problem for me at all, and, and hey, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna drink socially again, like, that's her truth, you know? Like, I mean... Even in recovery, we tell people, like, if they don't believe that they're alcoholics or addicts, to try some controlled drinking, you know? And controlled drinking means, okay, I'm going to say that I'm only going to drink on Friday and Saturdays, and when I go out, I'm going to have two glasses of wine, or I'm going to have four beers, or whatever. You set the limit. It could be 10 beers, right? But then you stop at that. And if you can't stop, and then you set a time, like maybe 30 days or 90 days like her. And then if you can't do it past that, then probably you might be an alcoholic or an addict, you know, and if that's the case, then seek treatment for that or go to a 12-step program or find religion or whatever it is you need to do to stay sober, you know? Um, so, uh, then she, okay, then she talks about 
having um having fun and she starts crying and I'm like, okay. This is when I cry on video and people say things like, oh, the tears about recovery. It's tears of joy, okay? When you are sober and you are feeling things for the first time in your life again, like you're so, like you have all these emotions and you don't know what to do with them. But the majority of them are like joy, right? You are feeling joy and happiness for the first time without being lit. And it, and it being this forced emotion, right? Like from alcohol or drugs. Like, I can remember what, I, I mean, I so related to her when she started crying, she had to get up. I was like, oh my God, I was like totally like that, right? Um, okay, hold on a second. She says that alcohol is suppressed emotion and now that she's not drinking, she's more emotional. I can remember, and I've shared this story before, all these stories I'm sharing, I've, I've shared before and you can fact check them. So. I had a friend of mine that got sober. Now, she did end up going into a 12-step program. 12 step program. She's been sober ever since. And um, so she is has been one of my dearest friends ever since we got sober. And she um, and she lives completely across the country now. And she, um, I was in treatment. So I was in treatment over New Year's. I told the New Year's story just yesterday. And she called me on New Year's Eve, and she was drunk. And I said, um, girl, you know I'm in treatment, right? Uh, January 1st is her sobriety birthday of 1995 and she's been sober ever since then. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here today because we went to all of our meetings together and then she moved to go to graduate school and it was very lonely for me because I didn't really have anybody. That was my age in sobriety, but I remember we were driving over the interstate and she was dating a guy that was in my aftercare group. We both of us got into relationships when we shouldn't have. And so she's in this, dating this guy, right? And he went back out. He was a crack addict. And he went back out and started smoking crack again. And she started bawling. And she said, um, she started like pounding on the front of the car. I'm like, girl, what is going on, right? And I'll never forget this. She said, this is the worst part of being sober because you have all these emotions and you don't know what to do with them. I have remembered that ever since that day that it happened because it is the truth. You have all these emotions that you've been muting and pushing down and not dealing with. And it sounds like there's like a moving truck out here or something. But anyway, and so I totally related to that when she said that. Um, she also talked about alcohol being her friend. Oh my God. When I was like in treatment, I had to write a letter to my best friend. Okay. There was a fantastic book by Carolyn Knopf who ended up dying later. It's so sad, but she wrote a book called Drinking a Love Story and it was about her relationship. And Jacqueline talks about relationship with alcohol. If you're watching this, Jacqueline, get the book alcohol or Drinking a Love Story. It is fantastic. It was one of the first books I read getting sober. It is such a great book. She talks about sitting in a bar and looking at the wine glasses and falling in love with like the stem of the wine glass and the legs of the wine glass and, or the wine and things like that and talking to people in a bar and being more social. I mean, she talks about her relationship with alcohol being her friend. When I was drinking, drinking and drugs was my friend. It was my confidant. It was my lover. It was the person I talked to every single day. It was the person I trusted the most. I trusted alcohol and drugs more than I trusted anybody in my entire life. When she says that she felt like alcohol could be her friend, I was like, Phew. like that is such a real statement. Um, I so related to her when she said that. Um, okay. So then she goes on and she says that she didn't, okay, she didn't think that she had a problem, that she thought she had beaten her problem and was just drinking socially. Um, so she talks about all that. Then she talks about having problems sleeping and that she was eating a lot of sugar and that she increased cravings for sugar. So this is like one thing that people don't talk a lot about is that alcohol has so much sugar on it. It, a lot of different alcohol. There's now like sugar-free alcohol and things like that, but a lot of alcohol has a lot of sugar in it. So when you quit drinking, you immediately start craving sugar. And in fact, the movie 28 Days with Sandra Bullock, which is fantastic. If you've ever seen the movie, you'll know. They talk about this in the movie. I haven't seen it in years, but they talk about this in the movie because Sandra Bullock's roommate is like making these like n necklaces or whatever out of these candy wrappers. And she's like obsessed with candy. Like she's getting huge bags of this candy. <laughs> it's so true though. Like you, cr I, I craved candy like nobody's business. I was going through those like miniature snicker bars and stuff like that, like nobody's business back in the day. Um, Okay, this was the thing that got me. She talks about going to her therapist and her therapist telling her to get a calendar. And that her, her and she thought, she was like, I know that people are going to think this is corny or something like that. Or she thought it was corny at first or whatever. And that she's like, get yourself a, cal a calendar. Okay, I have talked about this so many times that in my apartment and in my next apartment, I kept a calendar for two years. Every single day sober, I would write down like day 35, day 42. I did that for the first two years that I was sober every single day. 
I was so, excuse my language, fucking proud for every day that I put on that calendar. Jacqueline, you should be proud for every single day that you're putting on that calendar. I love that she shared that because that was probably one of the things that kept me going the most was that damn calendar in the kitchen. I couldn't wait to get up and be like, one more day, one more day, you know? And I know it sounds so corny, but like when she said that, I was like, oh, this is like the real deal. Like she's doing it. Like she's doing the deal, you know? So anyway, um, Okay, she's, this was so powerful to me. She said she will never drink away something again, okay? I don't use words when it comes to drinking and drugs. This is her prerogative she can do. I'm just sharing my thing. I don't say never because I don't know that I'll ever pick up a drink or a drug again. I don't know that. Um, I just have today. I have a daily reprieve. That's what I believe. Um, I hope I don't. I hope I don't ever pick up again. Um, I will say this, that if I do ever pick up again, you will probably see me disappear from YouTube. Um... I hope that I make it back into the rooms of recovery. I hope I make it to treatment. I don't know. Um, I know that if I were to relapse, there's been so many things that I have never used that I would probably just be gone, okay? Um, I even told my husband. I even had friends of mine back in the day that I used to use with write him letters when we first got together about who I was when I was using so that he would know because I told him, if I ever pick up again, you have to leave. It's You cannot stay. Um, and my, my family had, and my friends that were around back then have set very strict boundaries with me. I mean, it's been 28, almost 29 years, but we don't borrow time in recovery. So I've been sober for 28 years and over 10 months at this point. But um, it, you never know, you know, like I had two friends of mine in the last couple of years that went out that had double digit years of sobriety. One had 10 years and, or 11 years and the other one had 21 years. And so it can happen. And they were people that were working programs, you know, and then one day, they took a drink and the drink took them. Well, one of my friends started smoking pot. Now she's doing everything in the entire world. Um, and she was taking pot medicinally to help her with something medical. And then she was smoking pot chronically every single day. Then she started eating pills. Then she started drinking. And now it's psychedelics and the whole nine yards. And it makes me very, very sad. Um, but I don't know what God's plan is for her, you know? I hope that she chooses to make other choices someday. I love her dearly. And she's has been a very important part of my life. Um, and I pray for her every single day. So, and, and as well as my other friend. Um, and you know, my other friend was in a 12-step program for a long time and she's somebody I even questioned whether or not she was ever an addict. You know, I, I'm like, I don't know. Like she seems to be like, she's, she's gone back out, but she's not like, when I say go back out, that means that they start using again. She's gone back out, but like, she doesn't seem to be like my other friend. Like she's not like balls of the wall with it. You know, she's like a drink here, a drink there, sm smoke a blunt with some friends on vacation. Like, I don't know, maybe it wasn't a problem for her. I don't know, you know? I will say one of the things that is scary to me is that I got sober so young that I do think from time to time, maybe I'm not an addict or an alcoholic. <laughs> the thing is, if I'm not an addict or an alcoholic, the idea that I would be willing to give up everything in my life for a drink or for a joint or for a pill or a snort of cocaine or whatever, like no normal person would be willing to give up the amazing life that I have today to even risk that. So that's why I don't even go there to try it. It's just not worth it to me, you know? Because I just don't know. Um, but I love that she says that she will never, even, I'm not somebody that uses words never, but I love that she said she will never drink away something again. That she realizes and has awareness. I think awareness is the first key and action's the second. And I love that she realizes that she was trying to drink things away in her life. Because God, I so relate to that. I was trying to drink everything away, including being gay. So I get it, right? She said she lost 23 pounds, which is amazing. And I said, exactly, that's what happened to me too. Like, and it was, and she talks about how it wasn't like the first month. It was like between month, like the second and third month. And I'm like, that's exactly what happened to me. That's exactly what happened to my mom. That happens to a lot of people, right? And um, I don't know what that's about. I think it's the chemistry changing in your body, but I know so many people that between, it's like, between like months, like two and four or five, six, like just like drop weight like crazy. Um, Alcohol has a lot of calories in it. Alcohol has a lot of, you know, plus you're not moving a whole lot and stuff like that. You're pretty sedentary. So I think that's probably why it is. But our whole body chemistry changes when we quit, quit drinking. Um, then she goes on to say that she's not going to drink through the holidays. This is where I was like, okay, please, please, girl, do not set your expectations too high, right? Like, 
one of the biggest topics that you will hear around this time going through through the new year um through new year's eve and through the new year in 12-step meetings is holidays come up a lot whether that be family gatherings holiday parties christmas parties work parties i mean it comes up a lot in 12-step meetings about how difficult they are how hard it is to be around people that are drinking how hard it is it's not just about the drinking it's about people fighting being with family that you can't stand <laughs> being with friends that drive you crazy or people that you haven't seen in years and years it's like all of it together okay or like not drinking for the first time and going to Christmas parties and not knowing who you are at those parties or who you're supposed to be or feeling uncomfortable in your own skin. There's so much that goes along with it. First of all, I would say to anybody out there, you don't have to go to those parties, okay? You can say at the last minute, I don't want to go. And the reason why is because I'm trying not to drink and I think it'll be too difficult to me. Nobody will hate you for that, number one. Number two... If you do go, take somebody with you that's supportive. Like, she talks about how supportive Jordan is. He actually makes an appearance at the video, which I thought was very nice. He's very supportive of her. Um, I just thought it was really cool. You can tell he's trying to learn a lot about it. My husband knows everything about sobriety. He knows my sponsor. He knows my friends. He, trust me, he knows about the 12 steps. He knows everything. So, I thought that that was really, really cool. And he drank, so my husband drank. So, I thought that that was really cool to see Jordan come in at the last minute and be, well, not the last minute, but the last part of the video, and be very supportive of her. But you got a supportive person with you. You know, have an accountability partner that you can talk to on the phone if you need to. And then the, the biggest tool that I used in early sobriety was if I ever got myself somewhere where I didn't feel comfortable or it was too much for me, I could always leave. And I didn't have to be, you know, like... I didn't have to worry about whether people were going to be upset with me or not. Because I just say, hey, listen, this is too much for me. I'm trying to quit drinking. She said she was going to be honest about it. I'm trying to quit drinking. This is too much for me. I got to go. And nobody's going to look at you and be like, come on, just stay 10 more minutes. People will be like, hey, I totally understand it. I've never once ever said that to somebody. And I've said it many times, right? In my life, I mean, probably hundreds. I've never once had somebody beg me to stay or shame me for leaving. I've only had people be 100% supportive and say, Peter, I totally get it. I love you. Thanks for coming. So, you know, that's one of the biggest tools that I have um, in situations like that. I also think it's like a really big expectation. And that was where I would say to anybody that's going to say, I'm not going to drink through the holidays. The, hard, the holidays and events in our life are probably some of the biggest triggers for drinking or using drugs again. Um... And that's where I have to focus on just for today and having just one day at a time and not setting my expectations up too high for myself and realizing that I don't know what I'm going to feel like two weeks from now, so i got to just take one day at a time. And that's just a suggestion that's worked for me. Maybe you do something completely different. I think to have a goal of not drinking through the holidays, but taking it day by day and realizing that I we only have a daily reprieve from this. And when I wake up tomorrow, I'll see how I feel. And then that way, you don't, like, you say, hey, I'm going to come to your Christmas party. But I might, I might decide to change my mind at the last minute. If It depends on how I feel that day. Because you might wake up that day and be like, I'm not feeling it today. I don't feel good. I'm not mentally in a good space. And I don't want to go to this Christmas party. I don't even want to go to my family's Christmas. I had to do that with situations, you know? And that was totally fine. My mom got sober June 2nd. I got sober December 17th, the year before. So we were like six months right apart. My cousin got married like the third week of June. Both my mom and I obviously we're in the wedding and uh, we weren't sure if we were going to go to the reception and we told my cousin that we told my aunt that they were 100 percent supportive we decided literally like the day before that we were going to go and that we were in a good enough space but up until that day before we didn't know if we were going to go to that wedding we had a blast oh my god we danced and we had food and it was so much fun right um but I didn't know really how I felt about that till like the day before my mom and I both made a joint decision the day before that we were going to go and be each other's support system you know um, okay, and then she talks about the medical improvements, it's quitting drinking, which is amazing. Jordan comes in, and, and so yeah, it was a really great video. I thought she was really, really genuine, really, really authentic. Like I said, I don't want to make this video about all the issues that I have with Jacqueline. I'm not, I'm not going to just because she's doing this. <coughs> if something further problematic comes out about Jacqueline, like the fact that, well, it doesn't matter. If something further comes out about Jacqueline, I'll save that for another video. And I will address it. Um, but for this video, I'm very happy for her that she feels like this is the right choice. And this is the kind of Jacqueline's journey that I think her audience wants to see. <coughs> I love that she even addressed why she didn't continue. And why she didn't feel like she could continue to film her journey from the past. Because it made a lot of sense to me what she said. Whereas before, it just kind of felt like she couldn't really handle the criticism. Or the comments from people that loved her and were concerned about her. Which I would even relate to that if she got in a video and said it. And she kind of said that to some degree. My throat is itching so bad, you guys. <coughs> I hate coughing on camera because I just know people don't love listening to it. 
But I love that she addressed it and said it. I think what it showed me is that Jacqueline has the ability to be honest on video and address hard issues. So I hope that she carries that over into other areas of her career. Um, but yeah, in this video, I was very happy for her. And for anybody out there questioning it, first of all, like I say in any of my other videos, no matter how somebody chooses to get sober, whether it's a 12-step program, church, you know, whatever they do to stay sober, um, to question that, to mock that, is to wish death on that person. You know, people don't just die of overdoses and alcohol <coughs> consumption. People get drunk and they fall and they hit their heads and they die. People go into cardiac arrest. There's all kinds of ways that people die from alcoholism or from substance abuse of alcohol or drinking too much and things like that, right? It could happen the first time that you drank. Um, so I'm very happy for her that she feels like this is the right choice. Um, and I'm happy that she has a support system around her. It was really cool to watch this video. This was a video that I really liked watching from Jaclyn Hill. So for those of you that asked me to comment on it, that's what I had to say. Anyway, I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.